Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's session, we will deep dive into the architecture of uh, Kubernetes. So by the end of this session, we will understand the core components of Kubernetes, how these components interact to manage the workload, and also some real world examples to connect theory with practice. So before we start working with setting up your cluster or you know creating your pods and the different components, it's very important that we also understand the architecture, what goes behind the scenes, right? So let's get started with this. So before we jump into the architecture, let's let us quickly recap what Kubernetes is. So Kubernetes is an open source container orchestration platform and we can use this to automate our deployment, uh, scaling management of our containerized applications. So think of it as a system which is mainly designed to help you run your applications consistently. Now, uh, it can be on your uh, on-premises, it can be on your public cloud, it can be on your hybrid environment. So regardless of your underlying infrastructure, uh, you, you want to run your applications consistently. So that's where we can leverage your um, Kubernetes. Now, when we talk about the Kubernetes architecture, we can divide it into two main um, uh, sections. So, you know, like whenever we say a Kubernetes cluster. So we have two main components. We have the control plane and we have the node planes, the, the worker nodes. All right. So generally, when we talk about a Kubernetes cluster, you'll have one control plane node, which is the uh, like your manager node. And you'll have multiple worker nodes where you will be running your uh, workload. Now, this control plane is mainly responsible for uh, managing the cluster itself. And the node component is where our containers will be running. This is where you will be running your workload, your application, the containerized applications, everything will be running on the worker nodes. Now, let's break this down further. So first, we will let's talk about the control plane. Now, when we talk about the control plane node, now within this control plane node, we will have four main components. We have the API server, we have the etcd, we'll have the scheduler, and we will have the controller manager. And all these components will help you to manage your cluster, um, control the placement of your pods, the resources and everything. So that's where control plane is the main component of your cluster. And this is what helps you to manage your cluster itself. Now, we will talk about each of these components one by one. So first, let's talk about the API server. Now the API server is the heart of your uh, Kubernetes control plane. This is where, um, uh, this is the main component which helps your control plane to talk to the worker nodes and get the work done. So that's the heart of your control plane. Now this API server, it acts as the front door through which all the cluster operations are performed. All right, so like you want to create a pod or you want to create a deployment or you want to create a service. So this API server acts as the front door for all those operations. Now this API server is what exposes the uh, Kubernetes API. Like, you know, let's say when we use the kubectl tool or any other components and external tools, uh, API server is what exposes the Kubernetes API to perform those operations. So every change that you make you know, like it could be creating a pod, uh, it could be creating a uh, service, it goes through the API server. So any request that we are sending, that request goes to your uh, worker nodes through the API server. So this API server, that's your front door. And this is where all the cluster operations are performed. The next component we have is the etcd, which is another key component that we have in your Kubernetes. And this is the a key value store of your Kubernetes. So we can use this to store your data. So this mainly acts as a database for the cluster, which can be used to store all the cluster related information. So you can use this to store your configurations, your state, your metadata, 
and also your sensitive information. Now, the ECT, ETCD is very critical because uh, ETCD makes sure that your data is consistent across your cluster. And this is why your ETCD is a very critical component of your Kubernetes cluster. So, if your ETCD fails, the cluster will not be able to retrieve or modify the state. So you won't be able to, you know, like uh, access your sensitive data. You won't be able to access the configurations, nothing. So that's why your ETCD is another key component that you have. It's a very critical component and it's, it acts as a database where you can store all of your key value stored data. Let's say, you know, like for example, when we create a deployment, like let's say I'm creating a deployment manifest file with three replicas. Now, ETCD is where this information will be stored. So, ETCD will keep track of your desired state. So, let's say, you know, I've defined my replicas as three. So, ETCD will keep that information. And at any point, if a pod crashes, the control plane will check the ETCD uh, to, you know, basically check the desired number and will ensure another pod is created to match the desired state. All right. The next component we have is the scheduler. Now, this is another uh, important component that you have as part of your control plane. And the scheduler is responsible for running the pods on your worker machines. All right. So whenever, like, let's say if I say kubectl um, uh, create pods or kubectl run pods, whatever it is. So the scheduler will be responsible for creating those pods or running those pods on the um, uh, worker machines. So the scheduler will determine which node is available, which node is best suited to run our newly created pod. Now these nodes are basically selected based on certain considerations. So it looks as looks at the resource availability, like you know how much of CPU is available, how much of memory is available. Uh, it will check if there are any node affinity rules that are applied, if there are any tens and tolerations that are applied. So it will check all those. Uh, uh, constraints and based on that it will uh, select the nodes and run the pods for us for example let's say you know we are creating a pod that requires four cpus and a very specific zone so the scheduler will ensure that the pod will land on a node that meets this criteria so like you know let's say uh, i've created a, a tint and toleration for a node and the scheduler will make sure that the pod is running on that specific node only and not on other nodes. So your scheduler is responsible for running the pods on the um, uh, node machines. Now the last component we have in the uh, control plane is the controller manager. Now the controller manager is responsible to make sure that the actual state of your cluster uh, uh, matches with the desired state all right so under this there are multiple controllers that are available so we have the node controller we have the replication controller we have the service controller and uh, many more now each of these controllers perform very specific functions so uh, if you're talking about the replication controller so that's basically your replicas uh, node controller is basically the number of nodes so all those uh, controllers is managed by your controller manager. So let's say, for example, we will create a manifest file for replica set. And uh, under this, we define that we need five replicas. Now, this replication controller will ensure there are five pods running. And even if one of the pod fails, the replication controller will spin up a new pod to match the replica set definition. All right. So that's about the components that we have in the control plane. All right. So we have the API server, uh, which acts as your front door. We have the ETCD where all the um, uh, information related to the cluster is stored. Um, we have the scheduler, which is responsible for uh, running the pods on the worker nodes. We have the controller manager, which basically manages the actual state with the desired state. And under this, you have multiple controllers. You have the node controller, replication controller, uh, service controller and many more Next we will look at some of the components that are available as part of your node machines your worker nodes All right now. This is where our uh, Containers will be running or the workload. So whatever the containerized applications we are going to run 
this is where uh, it will be running now under the worker nodes we will have the kubelet we'll have kube proxy and we will have a container runtime again we will look at each of these components one by one but any number of worker nodes you have each of the worker node will have these components so if you have like let's say three worker nodes each of the worker nodes will have a kubelet a kube proxy and a container runtime so the first component we will look at is your kubelet now, Kubelet is simply an agent that will be running on your worker machines or your remote machines, which are part of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, this agent is responsible for the communication with the API server. So if you recall, I told you that uh, any operations that we perform, it goes through the API server. So the Kubelet as an agent gets the instructions from the API server and executes them on the worker nodes. All right, so this agent communicates with the API server to ensure that the containers are running as specified by the API server. So the kubelet will get the instructions from the API server and executes them on your node machines. So like, let's say you want to create five pods. So I'll run, you know, uh, kubectl uh, create pods and or let's say, you know, we have defined it in a YAML definition file. Now the API server will send these instructions to the kubelet and the kubelet will make sure there are five pods running on the node machines. All right. So kubelet uh, will monitor the health of your pods and it reports back to your control plane. So let's say we have a container running in a pod and if the pod crashes, kubelet will notify the control plane and restart the container if necessary. So it's an agent basically. The next component we have is the kube proxy. Now kube proxy is the networking component of your worker nodes and this mainly manages the networking of your pods. So your kube proxy is responsible for managing the networking of your pods. Now this will ensure that all the services can uh, communicate with each other and it does so by maintaining various network rules. So, your kube proxy it makes use of IP tables or IPVS to traffic uh, to route the traffic within the cluster. So let's say we have an application with a front end and a back end, and when the front end pod needs to communicate with the back end service, your kube proxy will ensure the request reaches the correct pod. So that's a networking component. It ensures that your pods can communicate with each other and the routing is happening properly to the correct pod. All those things is handled by the kube proxy. The last component we have uh, is the container runtime. Now, Kubernetes in the backend, it makes use of a container runtime to create your containers. So uh, we have container runtime engines like Docker or Containerd, which is used in the backend to run our containers. So uh, let's say we need the um, uh, we need to create a, a pod now for that we need to have the container image first so the container runtime will download the container images and then run those images on your worker machines all right so let's say we have created a pod definition and uh, we have all the instructions within the definition file like your image name the port number etc now when we deploy this pod the container runtime will basically get those instructions. It will download the image mentioned in the definition file and then start the container for us on your worker machines. All right. So that's about the components that we have on the node machine. So again, you have the kubelet, which acts as an agent and it basically gets all the instructions from the API server and executes it on the uh, worker node. Then we have the kube proxy, which is the networking component. It helps. Uh, uh, with you know uh, communication between the pods and ensuring the traffic is routed to the correct pod and then you have the container runtime which is used in the backend like your docker or container d to basically download the images run the containers and everything so these are the main components that we will need to work with when we talk about your uh, kubernetes cluster now, in addition to these components, there are some more components that are generally used to uh, enhance the functionality of Kubernetes. So we have DNS, which is used for internal service discovery. 
we have ingress controllers which is used to manage your http and https traffic we have logging and monitoring so we have tools like uh, prometheus and grafana uh, which can be used to provide the visibility into the cluster's health and then we have your storage classes which can be used to uh, provision storage dynamically for your applications so, so these are some additional components that uh, you will end up using uh, other than your control plane components and your worker node components and that brings us to the end of our um, uh, session so kubernetes architecture it's a perfect balance of simplicity and power and by understanding these components and how they interact you can design and manage scalable reliable and secure systems if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated uh, comment below with your topics or suggestion for future topics thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video